once again, precious one, to romantic answers with me, Pastor Ebenezer Mesa. This is where we sing the questions on your heart to the answers on God's very own heart. I want to thank you for your likes and your subscriptions. Make sure you like and then make sure you also share and comment as well. Today we are looking at what is the origin of sex? Where does it come from? Stick and stay. We'll be right back. Welcome back, precious one, to Romantic Answers with me, Pastor Ebenezer Mensa. Like I mentioned earlier today, we are looking at what is the origin of sex? Where does it come from at all? All right, let's delve into it. Now, the moment you begin to appreciate the origin and the manufacture of a particular product, you know whether it is inherently good or evil, and also how to utilize it to your benefit so that it doesn't end up hurting you. Now, sex, interesting topic. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 28, and also let's add the 27. The Bible says that God made them male and female, and he told this male and female to multiply. How are two people going to multiply and fill the earth? Chapter 4, verse number 1. Apparently, Adam knew. The Bible said that, and Adam knew his wife, and she became pregnant. So, Adam had sexual intercourse with Eve, his wife, and she became pregnant. So, that is the first mention of sex that we see in the scripture. Alright? And that is the, at the inception of the human history. So that was the first sexual intercourse ever. The first sex. Where did this idea come from? Where did this brain behind sex come from? We retrace our steps back to chapter 1, verse number 27 and 28 of Genesis. And God, the Bible says that God made them male and female. Have you ever noticed that the female genitalia is perfectly designed to receive the male genital? So even when God was creating Adam, when God was creating Eve, he had it at the back of his mind that there is coming a time where the man will have sexual intercourse with the woman. He had that in mind already. So it was not when he was creating Eve that it suddenly dawned upon him that let me create the female genital so that there can be sexual intercourse between the man and the woman. No, 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 no. Even when he was creating Adam, he had that in mind already. So God is the brain behind sex. He created the male and female. Now that presents us with the premise that sex is not between a woman and a woman. Sex is not between a man and a man and definitely not between a human being and an animal, bestiality as it is called. Lesbianism, gay, homosexuality, the whole enterprise of it, that is sexual perversion. That is not the original intent for sex. So the first premise is that sex is between a man and a woman. And is it any man or woman that we are talking about as in a one night stand with a Casanova, with a prostitute, with two people who think they love each other and probably may get married tomorrow, have even gone through counseling and all that, so we are just about to get married so we can have sex. Oh, I want to have sex to see if this boy is good in bed, if this girl is good in bed. Oh, I want to have sex to know if he is potent enough. All those things are not accounts for sex. It is sexual perversion. It is unbiblical. It is ungodly. The only grounds for sex, Genesis chapter 2, verse number 24, and chapter 4, verse number 1. The Bible says in chapter 2 that for this reason shall a man leave his father and his mother. He's graduating from manhood to become a husband. And you can check out that series with Reverend Francis Valderwood of Christian Faith Church International BU Second Year. So the man graduates to become a husband and he shall cleave unto his wife 
and the two of them shall become one flesh. So it was when Adam had cleaved unto Eve and had become one flesh with her that the Bible says in chapter 4 verse 1 that and Adam knew his wife, a husband and a wife. That is the first premise for sexual intercourse. So first of all, it is between a man and a woman and not just any other man or woman. But the bracket is very limited and shortlisted to a husband and a wife. Precious one, do not fall for this human right and whatever have you. Listen, laws that were relevant to the human society in a hundred years past is no longer relevant. And laws that are relevant today may not be relevant a hundred years or even 50 years down the line. Bible, God's word is eternal, hasn't changed, is still the same, and will forever be the same. And since God is the originator, the brain behind sex, I think it's best to consult his manual concerning what he has to say concerning sex. And it is between a man and a woman who are married. Not how much you love each other, not how much your sexual edges have arisen that you feel so corny, so you call the guy or you call the lady, nobody is at home, can you come over? Please, 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 please. That is not the way God designed sex. And eventually, you will see some certain dangerous consequences of such. And God willing, as we continue along this same trajectory, we'll be looking at the consequences of sex outside the bonds of marriage. So, precious one, do not be pressured and do not succumb to your sexual edges to have sex outside the bonds of marriage or with any other being or thing. Sex is solely between a man and a woman who are a husband and a wife. Thank you. God bless you. Stay blessed and be a blessing. Precious one, thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you like, leave a comment behind. Let us know what you think. Also, make sure you share to others to be a blessing. Follow us on Facebook with a hashtag, God is Romantic. Stay blessed and be a blessing.